everyone, welcome to today's video. I will continue setting up my new 16 inch MacBook Pro. I will be showing you around the accessibility settings on a Mac and I will be telling you about my preferences as someone who's visually impaired. And as a quick reminder, this video is not sponsored by Apple or anything. This is just me wanting to share what has worked well for me. My name is Angela and I'm a visually impaired designer. Alright, so we're first going to start out by looking at system preferences. And we're going to look for the little accessibility icon. Alright, so this is really where we can get in and customize things and make it work well for a disability or even for just a person who doesn't have a disability, there could be some settings in here that would be helpful to you. Alright, so we're just going to look through these different tabs and see what they have to offer. So the first one is voiceover. So if I tap on this little box here, it says that it will enable voiceover. Accessibility window, accessibility features table, voiceover, selected has keyboard focus. Yeah, so that just activated my voiceover. And so now I can use his voice to help me navigate through the setup process since it can be kind of difficult to see or I can decide to turn it off at any time. I think I'm going to leave it on for this though because it really is kind of hard for me to see things before I get the text larger and such. So next you can zoom. go to zoom. The top one says... Use keyboard shortcuts to zoom. Uncheck checkbox. So I love using the different keyboard shortcuts so I'm going to check, check. that Use one. Shortcuts to zoom. Checkbox. Use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. So I'm going to leave that one unchecked. I don't think I need to use that one. You can change in here what part of the screen is being zoomed in when you zoom. You can do full screen, split screen, or picture in picture. So sometimes I'll come in here and change the setting depending on what I'm working on. But most of the time I just leave it on full screen. So what this will do is I'm going to click option and command and the plus button. And now I can zoom in on anything I want. And I can move around my screen and it's really nice for things that I can't read such as what we're doing right now. So if I wanted to, I only need to be able to see this part of the screen so I can leave it zoomed in now. And I'll probably do that and then I'll just turn off voiceover from here on out. The next checkbox is enable hover state. And this is where you can press the command key and it will make the text larger so that you can see what you're pointing to so that you don't always have to be zooming in. So I love this feature so I'm going to tap on that and I can show you how it works. So now that it's enabled I'll push down the command key and see how I hovered over some text and made it super large especially because I'm zoomed in now. So I'll go ahead and zoom out so you can see what it looks like in normal. So normally I wouldn't be able to read what this says very easily at least without zooming in. So I would just click the command key and then point on that text and now I can see it very large. That's actually larger than on my last laptop. But it tells me exactly what it says in really large text which is very helpful when it's something small that you need to read real quick or even something that's a larger body of copy that you can't necessarily see. And as soon as I let go of the command key, it goes away. Ooh, this is something I've actually never noticed or known about. I don't think that the touch bar is very helpful to me, but it says that you can enable touch bar zoom. So I'm kind of curious to see what that means. I'll have to do some research and let you know what I think of this new feature that I've never noticed. And then next we come over here to the display. I'm going to zoom back in here. You can do all sorts of things. So you can invert the colors. That's not something that helps me and so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Reduce motion. I've never worried about that one either. Or increase the contrast. You can also reduce the transparency. I do that one because it helps when the background isn't having an image or just distracting things in the background. So I'll reduce that. It looks like you can change it so that it's monochromatic and you can differentiate without color. That's also something that I'm not going to put on mine. The next one down is speech. Most people recognize me by my voice. It looks like you can change the voice you use for your voiceover and anything else that he's going to be speaking for. 
which is kind of nice because I could have a lady voice if I wanted to. It looks like you can customize it. You can pick series voice if you want to. So if you wanted to have it from platform to platform, be the same voice, that could be helpful. And there's a variety of different voices you can use based on where you're living. So it might be helpful for you to pick a different person. You can change the speed. You can speed it up or slow it down depending on preferences. You know, maybe when you first start using voiceover, it would be helpful for you to go slower. Or if you want to speed it up because you're used to voiceover, you can make it faster. So that's nice. Enable announcement. Announce when alerts are displayed or applications need your attention. So it will speak that to you instead of you having to look at it and notice it. That's really cool. I'm going to turn that on. It says speak selected text when the key is pressed. You can turn on speak items under the pointer. Then you can come over here to the panel. You can put in descriptions. It says play audio descriptions when available. When there's visual content in the media, that's super helpful for someone who's visually impaired. And that's the end of the visually impaired section. Then there's a hearing section here where you can do stuff with audio and closed captioning. There's a motor section for the keyboard, the voice control, pointer control, and then in general it has Siri and shortcuts. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Siri. I'm going to enable type to Siri. I'm going to leave on the settings and the shortcut to be able to use all of these different things including zoom, voiceover, sticky keys, slow key, mouse keys, just all of them in here so that I can use them as I learn them. So it says quickly press touch ID three times to toggle accessibility shortcuts. So that's super helpful to know how to turn it on on this new setup with this laptop. All right, so now that we've looked at the accessibility settings, I'm gonna go back to the general settings in here and look at a couple of things that I think will be helpful to me that aren't in, within the accessibility. It's more of a general settings. So first off, you go into general, and you can see that you can pick a light, a dark, or auto appearance. And so the auto will change depending on the lightness of the room you're in. You can also change the accent color. The default is blue. And so you can kind of customize it for either your visual needs or just for fun. A highlight color, you can change that as well. Okay, this one's super helpful. The sidebar icon size. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine to large so I can see those better. And then it says automatically hide and show the menu bar. So I'm going to tap on that one because it's helpful to be able to hide the menu bar when I'm not using it so that I'm eliminating any visual noise that I don't necessarily need to use unless I'm trying to toggle between a different program. And then show scroll bars automatically based on a mouse or key track pad. So I think it's very helpful to be able to see the scroll bars. I'm just going to leave automatic, that's fine. Click in the scroll bar to jump to the next page. I'm not going to worry about that setting. Alright, so let's go look and see if there's any other settings that would be helpful. Alright, so in here you can change the size of the dock. So usually I make that large. And then you can magnify and you can pick where on the position on the screen is. So I like mine on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it there. But you can put it on the left or the right as well. Alright, so these settings look good. I'm just going to leave them on the default because they are what I prefer to have them at. And then in here you can change some settings for Siri. Looking over them, I'm happy with what they are for the default. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there for now. Alright, so in here you can change for the display you can change it to large text but you can change it there's medium text here the default is smaller and then the smallest one here has more space between the lines the lighting has extra space which can be nice if you have difficulty with lines of text melding together all right so a feature that i missed in accessibility i'm going to go ahead and go back in there and i'm going to go to the display and then i'm going to choose the cursor and now you can see that you can change the size of your cursor, which is super helpful. So you can check that you want the shake mouse pointer to locate. So if I shake it, it will get larger by itself. So if it gets lost and I have a hard time figuring out where my mouse is, if I just shake my finger on the trackpad, it really helps it get bigger. I use that quite a bit. 
but you can also just change what the cursor size is on a regular basis and I find this really helpful because I tend to lose my cursor a lot. So I'll probably put mine somewhere in the mid to smallerish range just because I think it's annoying when my cursor is so large that it's covering up stuff that I'm trying to look at. But it is quite small so I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Alright everyone, that's a good summary of all the accessibility settings I use on my computer. The ability to customize the settings on my computer has made a huge difference to me as someone who's visually impaired and also someone who's a designer. I would love to hear from you what type of computer you use. Are you an Apple person or a PC person? I'd love to learn more about the systems that I'm less familiar with and how they work with accessibility. Let me know if you'd like to see any videos similar to this one in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel below and turn on the notification bell so you can hear about any future videos. It really helps my channel out and it's free for you to do. I hope you'll join me for my video next week. But until then, have a fantastic week. Bye!